Right now, there is an important debate going on in the realm of physics that has important repercussions for communications and, well, basically anything involving electromagnetic waves, which is quite a bit of our technology. That it is orbital angular momentum waves versus what we call MIMO, meaning multiple in, multiple out. A process where we use multiple antennas, such as your uh, Wi-Fi router, to uh, to maximize signal in a complicated environment. Okay, so this starts in 2011. There, a guy by the name of Bothide, Swedish Space Institute, d demonstrates a kind of a uh, a different kind of radio wave. We'd say a twisted radio wave, wave or one with vorticity. Um, he demonstrates it. I think it was Italy. Uh, puts, out, puts, out, puts out some papers. But what's really interesting to us is early 2012, Ove Edvers, Anders Johansson put out a paper that says, Is this unexploited? Is this possible? Which, long story short, they say no. They say that, really, using multiple antennas here to get, which is really no different than this technique here. Now, so the question right now is, are they, is both side right, or is it Mr. Edvers? Now, what's at, what's at stake is, if both side is right, this, um, we could potentially um, put an infinite amount of information in a single frequency. Now, of course, we do, I mean, that may not be feasible, but if we could even double or triple the spec, uh, spectrum out there, we, that'd be a tremendous resource for us. So, okay, Ed first puts this out, out that paper, saying no. Both side comes back later, says, yeah, we can too. Some other people came out, out and say, no, you can't. Both I and friends come back and say, yeah, we can. Okay, so, yes, he, he shares um, back and forth, back and forth, people arguing. What are we going to conclude? Let's take a, a little bit closer look at this. Okay, so, MIMO, as I said, is... Uh, it's a technique for, for if we have two multiple antennas here, multiple antennas here, or maybe even just two antennas, but uh, multiple antennas. So we have a complicated environment. Maybe this has to go around an obstacle or bounce off a wall or bounce this way or that way or that way. You can add up all the signals and get a higher quality. Should I get sufficient light? get a higher quality signal. You can use more and more uh, antennas to get a better and better signal. Now, we can also... Now, how is this different? Well, let's not worry about that immediately. First of all, starting with the paper by Ed Ofers, starts with an equation right there. Nice linear equation. Well, that's... we all love linear equations. Nice linear equation. H X plus N equals Y. This is actually a matrix equation, but don't worry too much about that. Um, X has all the information, the phase information, and such, that coming off the end, the, the transmitting antenna. H has you know, all the information about the environment, about the environment the waves are bouncing around in. N is noise. Y is what what the was actually received. Okay, so now on one hand, this of course makes it very useful, and uh, the paper by Ed Ofers is quite thorough, a very thorough paper. He goes through it quite thoroughly and shows that. Uh, no, it's impossible. 
problem being, the problem is, he's starting with his basic assumption. He starts with that equation. What's wrong with that? It, the problem is that OAM is not a linear combination. It, uh, you, you cannot combine Okay, an ordinary electromagnetic wave looks something like, uh, let's say, amplitude e to the i k. Uh, sorry, e to the i omega t minus i k z um, with something like e in the x direction plus. IB in the Y direction. Okay. Now, there's no way we can, we can, this wave has no angular momentum to it. And you can't add them in a, such a way that you'll ever get angular momentum. A typical factor for a wave with angular momentum would be something like E to the I L phi, um, where L is an integer, one, two, three, four, positive or negative, zero, one, two, three, four, so on, positive or negative. Okay, now we can't add this in such a way. Um, we can't add enough of these in such a way we'd get a factor like this added in. That's not a linear combination. That is nonlinear. Just to be perfectly blunt, write it out. Nonlinear. Um, you know, it would be like adding up uh, how many neutrons can you get add up how many neutrons can you add together to get an electron? Well, you, you there's electric charge in an electron. Neutrons don't have any. It doesn't matter how many you add up, you still can't get one. So it doesn't matter how many regular waves you add up. Conservation of angular momentum says you can't get it. Um, so uh, starting with this equation, sorry, sorry about that, this equation is basically saying assuming MIMO, we get MIMO. Or uh, looking at different linear combinations, if we look at all the different possible linear combinations, we get all, everything that's possible with different linear combinations. This isn't a linear combination. So, um, or likewise, you know, we, we could demonstrate this likewise by adding a number of these together and looking at L equals R, which is in the Z direction cross with the pointing vector also in the z direction. Long story short, you're, that's going to be zero every time. Okay, now you say maybe I'm wrong. And obviously there's quite a bit of debate here. Who's right? Well, let's end this debate. And here's how we can end it. We can end it by a test. N nothing too exotic here. We can either, let's take Edfers as one side, little checkbox for him, or we can take Thide on the other side, little checkbox there. Now, if Edvers can take his equation, actually plug in numbers. Come on, you know, every uh, uh, algebra student has to, plug in, has to plug in numbers to show that their stuff works. Plug in numbers, make sure every bit of phase information is there. You can start off with an equation with that kind of phase and get the information and get the get everything to come out. You know, he ran through the equations quite thoroughly, 
but he didn't actually do a numerical example. Simple, basic, I know. But, you know, it's, it's an important check. Okay, so numerical example. You want to uh, end this debate, cut this Gordian knot, then it's a good place to start. You could do that and shut everybody down. On the other hand, okay, and, and this is quite an easy thing to do. This is probably the easier of the two things to do. Now, both Thide, on the other hand, who I'll be perfectly honest, my money is on, he, he could do something else. Exceed the Shannon limit. It's, a little, it's gonna be a little bit harder, take a bit more work. Okay, Shannon limit. Claude Shannon, an important physicist, um, showed how much information you can send over a single signal. Now, if we could take, okay, so let's, if we could take, calculate the amount of information in a single, um, a, sing, a single signal with no or, orbital angular momentum, calculate that amount, and then actually perform an experiment where we have a signal with you no know, L equals zero. That's not no no OAM. And, a, and likewise superimpose some orbital angular momentum modes. L equals one, L equals two, L equals three, so forth. Now if we, um, Okay, if we could actually show how much information we sent with these signals, even if we just have one or two. If we can show that that amount is greater than the amount that Shannon says is the maximum possible for this one, then both side wins. We can put a, put a big fat check mark right there. Now you say, maybe I'm wrong? Well, it's happened. But, let's Let's see it happen. This is the debate, and frankly what's at stake is uh, the entire spectrum we use right now for all communications. We could vastly improve the amount of our communications if we can exploit this, if we can learn to use this principle. Very important principle, only recently been applied to radio thanks to Mr. Bothide, and we need to use this. Thank you very much. This is David Foster. Have a good day.